Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca, the assistant curator here at Showtown. I hope that you're enjoying Seaside Week so far. Today we're going to step back in time and explore some of the more gross and gruesome aspects of taking a trip to Blackpool in the past. So let's begin by imagining it's the late 1800s and we're a mill worker from Manchester. We've been suffering a bit with various aches and pains and we've heard that doctors are telling people to go to the seaside to feel better. Blackpool is renowned at this time for its fresh air and cold seawater, which many people believe will cure a wide variety of illnesses. But the first thing we need to do is to get there. If you had money, you could travel in a coach, but for a mill worker like us, it's much cheaper to come by horse and cart. We don't want to waste our money on that, however, so we're going to walk all the way from Manchester to Blackpool, roughly around 50 miles. Luckily, we don't have much to bring with us, so let's set off. Oh, we finally arrived. That was tiring. And we're looking forward to getting settled into our accommodation for the night. But there's a slight problem. It seems like everyone has had the same idea as us. The boarding houses are full to bursting. In some of them, there are 30 people crammed into a room with six people to a bed. There's no room for us. Luckily, after walking around for a while, we managed to persuade a man called Robert Bickerstaff to sleep in one of his bathing machines opposite his Wellington Hotel. If you haven't seen one before, a bathing machine is a hut on wheels. They're pulled into the sea by horses and you get changed in them to protect your modesty before slipping out into the waves. If you don't want to venture into the open sea, you can always go to Reed's Baths where you can bathe indoors in warm, filtered seawater. If you don't own a costume, you can hire one, but many people will have worn it before you. So let's hope they were thoroughly washed. We settle down in our bathing machine to rest, lying on the damp hard floor with the cold wind rushing in. The next morning, our aches and pains are worse than ever. So we decide to go out and test Blackpool's health improving reputation. We grit our teeth and paddle in the sea up to our knees. And then we remember that our friend gave us some advice. They said that drinking the seawater makes you feel much better. And so we bend down and scoop some up in our hands and take a big gulp. Our eyes water and we splutter from the salt. Catching our breath, we look down and notice a large cloud of brown floating by in the water. We don't want to look too closely and pretend we haven't seen it. Later in the 1930s, people known as sanitary inspectors would walk up and down the sands looking for what they called floaters, as at that time, 60% of Blackpool's sewage flowed into the sea from two pipes located between Central and South Pier. But don't worry, the sewage was properly screened, meaning that it was ground up before it left the pipes so that it would not be quite so noticeable. We need to get this seawater taste out of our mouth, and so we start walking up the beach. We spot an ice cream cart and hurry over to take our place at the back of a line of other hungry people. When we reach the front, we pay a penny and watch as the seller smears a blob of ice cream on a small shallow glass. This is known as a penny lick. When we've licked the glass clean, we hand it back to the seller who picks up an unwashed cloth and briefly wipes the glass. He then smears more ice cream on it for the next person. These penny licks would later be banned for spreading diseases like tuberculosis. Having had our treat, we notice crowds of people up ahead on the sands. We wander through the various stalls and watch acrobats, musicians, puppet shows and fortune tellers. There are traders selling all kinds of things such as fruit, toys, jewellery and every ointment, potion and tonic you can think of. We spot the largest group of people in a circle and wander over to take a look. Here a chiropodist is set up and is offering to treat people's feet, for money of course. Soon people are peeling off their sweaty shoes for him to saw at their corns and calluses whilst the delighted crowd watches on. These alfresco chiropodists were usually removed from the beach by Blackpool Corporation as they were thought to be fraudulent and offensive. I imagine the smell probably was too. And so that concludes our seaside trip to Victorian Blackpool. 
Thankfully, things are much more hygienic today. If you would like to see more of the photographs shown here, please visit the new Heritage Blackpool website at heritageblackpool.co.uk. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.